So if you remove the one, so that would be cost, right? You just concentrate on the two oils with friction modifier and then the, the reference oil. Again, with these three oils are a subset of the oils that I also have to be results on. Uh, what you see is the same trend. Uh, the, the data, although it's, it's three data points, uh, so admittedly a sparse data set, uh, it does suggest that you get diminishing fuel economy improvements as you reduce viscosity. And this isn't a hand-drawn line. This is actually a polynomial curve that through that data. Um, so understandably, you can fit a polynomial curve through three points pretty easily. Um, but, but it does seem to show that, that you've got some tailing off effect there as you get down below the degree of CHS. So then we can compare the sequence 60 and, and the, the chassis dyno tests. And I think this is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, first thing that becomes very obvious is that the sequence 60 results across the board are lower. It, it doesn't concern me so much. I mean, fuel, fuel economy numbers are they're quantitative, but they're somewhat qualitative. If you want a bigger number, you can run a different drive cycle and you can get a bigger number. So the absolute values aren't so much of a concern. I'm really interested in the trends tell me the same thing. But the data from the sequence 60 and the data from the chassis kind of tests. So if we, if, we, if we put a curve fit through these, just to kind of understand what the trend looks like, what becomes apparent is that, yeah, that they, they do seem to tell the same story, that, that somewhere around 2.3, 2.2 HTHS, you've reached this optimal viscosity. And again, this is very specific this is for this engine, this for this car, for maybe this drive cycle. Um, but you reach this optimal viscosity. Once you go beyond that, once you go beyond that viscosity, the fuel economy benefits you get from the engine oil actually decrease. Um, so you can eyeball this and kind of say, yeah, they around 2.3, you can actually kind of go through with a little bit of mathematical rigor here and figure out exactly where the top of those curves are. If anybody can remember back to calculus, how do you find where the slope is zero on the polymetric curve? You have to take the derivative. I'll, I'll save you the trouble. This is right. I hope this is right. Um, but what's, what's re really interesting is at the end of the day, those two curves kind of maximize at almost the same age and what I would argue is with two data sets that are somewhat small, with the variability of the sequence 60 and the variability of the chassis dyno testing, 2.2 and 2.26 are essentially the same number. Um, so the engine standard and the fuel flow subjects they predict the same optimal viscosity. I think that's I think that's a pretty interesting observation. I think there's some implications that I'm going to go over here. Um, so so back to, to the conference question, back to Vicky's question, is there an end to fuel economy? Um, I, 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 think, I think the answer is yes, and I think we all knew that, but I, the point of my, my, my presentation was that there, it, yes, but there's also some, some very, um, I, I would say, simple steps you can take to actually quantify where that end is, and I'm sure some of the OEMs are going through the same process as we speak. Um, so what, what we saw is lowering the engine oil viscosity can improve the fuel economy. Not, not a terribly uh, surprising conclusion or observation. Um, in the engine stand and the vehicle testing, that point was somewhere 2.2 or so centipoids for optimal fuel economy improvement. Uh, below that, you get decreased fuel economy improvement. What that suggests is you're getting more boundary lubrication. You get more parts that are actually touching, creating high friction environments. So what that also implies is that not only are you getting less fuel economy, I think more important implication is that you're probably introducing durability concerns and then I, I, this, this note is kind of ancillary to my talk, but I wanted to, I wanted to, to make the comment that really what, what I've shown also is that the, the phase one of the sequence that piece, the fresh oil measurement in the sequence 60, and the FTP vehicle testing showed, showed a really strong correlation when we use the same engine. So what that means is the 60 consortium really accomplished what it set out to accomplish. Um, it wanted to develop a test that had strong correlation to the FTP results, which is what determines CAFE numbers for uh, OEMs, at least for the fresh oil measurements, I think this is fairly, fairly strong evidence that that is the case. So just quickly in summary, um, yeah, low viscosity lubricants definitely can improve fuel economy in passenger cars. Um, we saw that in the 60, we saw that uh, in, an, in a car that contained the engine from the 60. I, I didn't have time to go into this, but I still wanted to make the comment. Um, I, I hope it's fairly apparent. If engines have added appetites. Every formulator of the engine has an added appetite. I think the same is true for visco uh, viscometrics. Each engine has a different viscometric appetite, and I think understanding that and mapping that appetite is really going to be key as we move forward. Um, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of end with this, which is a comment, but also some, uh, uh, it's a comment that's 
space has been echoed by a few other people in the room. I'm, I'm happy to hear that other people kind of view this uh, the same as I do. So as they're currently being utilized, it's very clearly a limit to the contribution um, uh, by engine lubricant to vehicle fuel efficiency. You get down to a point, you're going to run into boundary lubrication. That's the end of that. Um, but really, we've got to kind of start thinking about um, engine lubricants not as a direct contributor to fuel economy, but engine lubricants as an enabler for better fuel economy. And it's great examples of how we can do that moving forward. Um, I think that's going to take us from incremental grains. So we move from GF4 to GF5 to GF6, and the sequence 6 targets get a little bit higher each time. It's a very incremental step. I, I think if we start looking at how the engine lubricant can protect the engine while it runs all of these fuel efficient hardware technologies, remove ourselves from how it performs in the sequence 60. I think that's where we're going to see some pretty large step changes in the amount of fuel economy we can get out of it. So like I said, I, 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 these are people who either help directly with, with slides, ideas, or, or at least 